in terms of art being a healing thing, it's really more about the process than it is the final product. And isn't that life, Karen? Yes. It's about the journey. It's about the the action, not about the destination, not about the where we end up. It's like how we fucking get there. Damn, let's talk some shit. It's Polly Siegel and Victoria Aaron. Two licensed therapists who've spent way too much money on degrees, certifications, and trainings. Mm. We both love what we do and couldn't imagine working in any other profession. But we're forced to be serious all the time, and that gets boring. Shit Talking Shrinks discusses important mental health topics, the human experience, and society at large, while poking fun along the way. It won't be all fun and games, because after every episode, you'll walk away with tangible tools to navigate life more effectively. We love a tangible tool. Hi, hi, hi. We have an incredible guest today, Karen Ross, who is a licensed clinical social worker and does a lot of incredible work in the art space um, and has really helped, the honestly, the Chicago therapy community better connect. She created a listserv that allows all of us to network and be able to um, find referrals and help people get really solid care. So I know I'm very thankful for the community that you've created for all of us Chicago therapists. And we're so happy to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the nice introduction. And I'm really happy to be here. Yay. So the topic today is art and how art can be so therapeutic, can be transformative, allows people to move through their emotions and be just a general coping skill when we face challenges and adversity. And, and I think art is oftentimes missed as a coping skill because people get so caught up in, well, I'm not artistic or I don't know how to draw. And there's so much pressure around art in this perfectionistic way. When I think if we kind of surrendered and let go of all of like the perfectionism, art can be so incredible for us. And I'm hoping you can kind of share about that. Yeah, I love that you you specifically honed in on the piece about, you know, perfection and imperfection. Actually, it's really ironic because the painting that's like right behind me that you can see. It says imperfect. But it says imperfect, I'm perfect. Just the one right here makes the difference. So yeah, I, I, I really, that's a big thing with me because, um, I feel that the most beautiful work I've done has been the most imperfect work. So it, in terms of, you know, my art practice and, um, I, I want to like really lean into that for myself because I think that the, like, a person just kind of dipping their toe into art feels that anxiety that it's not going to be good enough or it's not perfect or I messed up that line or it doesn't look realistic. And it's there, you have to work towards, you know, ignoring that noise and, and letting the process is really in terms of art being a healing thing, it's really more about the process than it is the final product. And isn't that life, Karen? Yes. Like it, it really is. It's like, this is, it's about the journey. It's about the, the action, not about the destination, not about the, where we end up. It's like how we fucking get there. Yeah. And it's messy and it's shitty. And, um, you go through the ugly phase before you get to the beauty phase. Um, there's just a lot that happens, but, um, and there are opportunities to redo it and change it. And, um, it's, it's all of that. Yes. You know, it's so interesting too. I was like, when you just said that, like you go through the ugly phase, like I was not an attractive kid and it, and you know, I'm like peaking right now. I'm at my most attractive that I've ever been. I doubt that, but okay. No, I promise. I promise, Karen, I wouldn't lie to you. And so it's like so fun because like, I feel like I can appreciate where I am now so much more because of like, what the fuck I looked like. And I'm like, yo, this is so great. <laughs> this is the best. And on the other hand, I feel like I peaked when I was 20 and it's only going downhill. So 
So the art is getting worse and worse. It's not a fine wine. No, that's why we have Botox, baby. <laughs> True. Well, and it's funny because, you know, I we have a bunch of teenagers and it's like when I see other teenage kids, particularly girls, and I'm just like, oh my God, she has no idea how beautiful she is. She probably hates how she looks and she's so exquisite. Yeah. Better enjoy that skin and that body while she still has it. <laughs> So, so tell us, how has art been transformative for you in terms of just health, wellness, and, you know, getting through the hardship that life brings us? Well, you know, it's been a really long journey for me. I've always been a really creative person since I was little. And I was always, you know, if there was an opportunity to do something creative in relation to whatever you know, if I was in school or camp or an activity, like I wanted to be the one who made the t-shirt for the team or help decorate that board that they were, you know, doing. Um, and so I always was doing creative things. And um, actually, when I was really little, my parents would take me to the library to get me to get books to read. And I would zoom to the art section. I remember this. And, and they would say to me, like, well, don't you want to get like a story to read? And I'm like, no, I'm reading these books. And they were all like, how to make this, how to make that. And I would just sit in my room and do my crafting. And um, that was that was so comforting to me. And I would have rather done that than read a book. So fast forward, you know, education, life, everything kind of, you know, gets, you know, more prominent than, you know, your creative stuff. And then eventually... Um, after I left um, Chicago, the city of Chicago, to um, move to the Burbs, and I had a little baby at the time, and um, we moved into a house, and I closed my practice um, in the city, and I needed art for the walls of our house. And so I decided, well, you know, I paint, I was. I had been painting little crafty things like little decorative boxes and stuff like that, but I wanted to do like visual art. I wanted art you could hang on the wall. So I started painting with acrylic and, you know, messing around with all that and doing mixed media and collage. And, um, and then shortly after, um, that I discovered this form of painting called encaustic painting, which is um, an ancient art form actually. And it's painting with uh, molten oh. wax. Oh, cool. Most of the work that I do now is with wax. And um, it, my studio looks like a meth lab. Oh, hell yeah. Things I've got a blowtorch, I've got griddles and pots of wax. Um, and I have a ventilation system. I mean, it's legit a meth lab. <laughs> I'm obsessed. See, suburban life can be cool. There's nothing cooler than a meth lab that's actually wax art. Yes. So rewinding that, um, that's my current thing that I'm doing now. But back in those earlier 2000 days, um, I ended up learning about this art form at the same time that I was getting separated from my first husband and wow. it was the most cathartic therapeutic. Um, it, it was such a wonderful thing to have um, available to me that helped me move through a, an extremely difficult phase in my life. And so I was, at the time, I didn't have the meth lab, and I was in my garage painting because I needed the ventilation. It's really important in this type of work. And so I was in my garage for hours, and um, it, I mean, in full honesty, it helped me avoid a lot of things too. You know, I didn't have to see the guy who was about to move out, and I could just be in the garage and do my thing. And so fast forward, I just, I kept working on that. And, um, I eventually met my second husband and we blended families and, um, and we were fortunate enough to build a home for the seven of us. <laughs> and so I got my dream studio with the ventilation system so that I could work year round 
because you can't do that in a garage. Um, so that it, it's just, it's really fascinating to see the evolution of that healing journey for myself. I hate the word journey, by the way. So I don't know why I just said it. <laughs> oh, cause I said it earlier. It's in your brain. It's just like, I don't know. I get really cringy when I say journey in regards to myself, but, um, <laughs> journey, not the band, but the actual, um, so I, um, I just, I look at even the art itself, you know, my mom is a really big fan of my art and she always talks about the evolution of the art and how it's actually in those earlier days when I was separated slash getting divorced, that art was really dark. It was really earthy. It was really moody. Um, I mean, granted there are, there were certain trends back then that kind of lent, you know, to that. But over time, as my life evolved, the art got happier, brighter, more joyful. And so, and I really think, you know, that being said that it, you're, the work that you're doing is really reflecting, you know, where you're at emotionally. How, how do you feel like, like if, if someone wanted to use art as a coping mechanism or a way to work through tough emotions, where would they start? Like if, if you could give us like uh, a, a jumping point. Yeah. It, you know, so many people who, you know, comment to me about my art, they, I always hear this line. They say, well, I'm not really creative. I'm not creative. I don't know how you do that. And I always say that every person, believe it or not, I think that every person is creative. Yes, I agree. Yeah, it may not be specifically with a paintbrush or a pencil, but if I do a little more digging and ask questions, you find out that they're really into gardening, they're into scrapbooking, they're into cooking. I think cooking is a really create baking, really creative endeavor. Um, and so I think it's important that people kind of expand their idea of what being creative means like maybe you cook a meal and you serve it in the most beautiful way. Your presentation is gorgeous and it's, you know, in the Insta worthy because you take a picture that is creativity right there. So I would urge people to tap into, you know, what is it that I do or make? What do I make? Do I, have I made a garden at my house? Have I, what have I done um, that, gave me that feeling that, you know, I want to repeat that. I want to, um, you know, make more of those things that I make. And I think that is a good launching point for people. And sometimes that might lead into a different art form because let's say you like to bake and then all of a sudden you you're baking cookies and you start decorating the cookies and the, the decoration of the cookies kind of, steps up a notch and you know now you're like pimping out your cookies and they're like really cool and now people want to buy them <laughs> so it's like just start with something that brings joy or start with something that feels like it brings some yumminess and then like you can continue to expand and and add more to that practice yeah and expand your idea of what you think being creative means i really think people are so tunnel vision they just think Creative means you're an artist. No, that, that doesn't mean that. It just means that you express yourself in an alternate form. That's really what it means. Karen, do you ever listen to Abraham Hicks? Yes. Yes, I do. This is what it reminds me of, like being a co-creator, like we're all creators and like, it's really cool. Like I was thinking about, I'm very visual. So I'm like thinking about like one of your one of your worlds dissolving, right? Like this marriage is dissolving and and then like you're creating an entire new world through this, this, this coping mechanism, but it's becoming so much more than that. And it sounds like even the way you said it, like, and then you met your, your, your now husband and you were able to make this world together. It's like, you just moved through this trauma by making something. Yeah. And, and it really was, and it, you know, when I first started making it, it wasn't about selling it. It was just about like, wow, this is so cool. And this feels so good to make. And I'm just making them and they're just kind of multiplying like gremlins. And, um, and I started off with these really tiny, pe I paint on wood, by the way, because wax 
needs like a, a stronger substrate to soak into because a canvas, it would just sink down into a canvas. So I paint on wood. So I was using these little scrap wood blocks and painting on them. And now, I mean, you see the piece behind me. That's with wax? That's wax. That's all wax. So you have to see it in person because the texture and vibrancy is, um, it's really something. And you can take a cloth and buff it and it becomes really shiny and it's, it's a really, you have to see it in person. I tell everybody that. And it isn't until they see it in person, then they're like, oh, I get it. This is really different. Wow. Yeah, no, I need to come to your, your mansion and check it out. Please come <laughs> to my studio. Yes, your I love ventilated having- ventilated meth lab. In my meth lab, yes. <laughs> so so we're, we're all about tangible tools. Um, if someone wanted to start using art, and as you've defined it, that could be baking, that could be actually doing something, you know, with paint, pen, oil, like, there's so many ways to practice. What, how would you advise someone who wants to start using art for therapeutic um, benefit? Well, I mean, there, are, uh, there are different directions you can take. Like, for example, there's a very famous book called The Artist Way. Um, which a lot of people have um, used therapeutically. And it's a series of exercises. I never really got through the whole thing, but um, it's always been a recommended um, book where you do the practice, you know, um, over a series of kind of exercises where they're meant to loosen you up and explore and just play. It's really about play. So have fun. Yeah. Having fun. Yeah. I mean, I think again, and like not to make this like a Abraham Hicks podcast, but it's like, you know, what she talks about, right. Is like, we deserve joy. We deserve abundance. Like that's, that's where source wants us to be. And it's like life. I think you said this earlier, like it can be shitty. Like we all know that, right. There's things happen that make it shitty. And so what's more fun than like sticking my hand in a bunch of paint and like just smearing it on something, you know, or just like melting a bunch of wax and like just getting into it. Yeah. Just see what happens. And, and speaking to that shitty part is that some of the stuff I've made that is so shitty (laughs) is some of the stuff that people like the best. I'm sure. Cause they can relate. Oh my gosh. I've had paintings that like I was embarrassed to show my husband like some paintings because I thought they were so bad. And he would be like, well, what's that over there? And I'm like, oh, you don't want to see that. And he's like, well, let me just see it. And I show it to him and he's like, that's so cool. And I'm like, really? And then like, you know, two weeks later, someone buys it. And I'm just like, what? What happened? But again, this is your perspective of what's shitty is not someone else's shitty. You know, um, it's just, you know, I've made pieces before where I'm like, what, what, what happened? What was that? Where did that come from? And like, how did that emerge? And why did I do that? So I, I see there's all these conscious and unconscious processes that are happening while you're kind of, while you're getting into your flow, which is also a really big part of this is finding that flow where you are, um, you know, like I said before, that there's no noise, you're just immersed in what you're doing. And it's really just about that process. And I think the other piece to it is anyone who wants to start doing using art or creation as a form of, of well being and practice is, leave perfectionism at the door. Like it doesn't matter what the outcome looks like or what the art or what the cookies with the icing end up as it, that truly doesn't matter. It's the process of like by creating and by just being abstract and engaging different parts of the brain that don't maybe normally get activation through our normal life, that that is inherently valuable. Also, I feel like it's like also like very intuitive. Like I think about um, 
at the beginning of the at the beginning of last summer, I was at a networking event where we did an art therapy thing. There's a bunch of clinicians doing this. And I it w- I cut out, I did all this stuff and there was like a mountain peak and a book page and I circled all these words that were like powerful and expressive and and loud. And then like I drew a sunflower and then like my life after that point, like I, I really do feel like I'm currently peaking and like not just the way I look, but just in so many arenas. And it's like, it felt intuitive. I look back at that piece of paper and I'm like, holy shit, like this is what it is. Like I actually tapped into something that I didn't even know I had really at that point because I was in such a bad place and it like expressed itself on the page. I love that. And I love that you can look back on that period and, and like you have this relic that's like, this was me when and you can look at some of these things around you, just like if you had a child, you know, in elementary school that, you know, made you art and brought it to you. And, and then you look back on it and they're, you know, teenagers now. And I'm just like, Oh, this, this was him when, you know, and you just, you just get a taste of that person in that moment. When I was a teen, I used to like, when I would feel these intense emotions, I would, I would just draw. Like I, my mom has paintings, like they're, they're funny to look back on that are like hung up on the wall because art was a really big part of my life when I was dealing with intense anxiety. And as we're just working through this together on this episode, I'm like, what happened to my art, my like inner artiste? Yeah. Wait, I was going to ask, do you still draw Polly? No. And that's the sad part is like, I I don't. And it was so helpful to me growing up because I was a very anxious teen, I guess, child as well. So this is inspiration that like, forget about how it turns out and whether it's pretty or good, but just let those emotions come to life on paper or come to life in your baking and cooking. Like there's so much yuck that we carry day in and day out. And if we can like use that yuck in, in art form to really work through it and experience it in a different way, I think that's magical. It is. And you have that, like you just express that, like you have that inside you, it's dormant. And it just, as you go through life, like I said to you, there were periods of my life where I was doing creative things. And then I was, you know, doing other things. And then I got back to creative things. And it it may ebb and flow in your life, but it's there and it doesn't leave. It's a part of who you are. So when you come to the day when you're ready to like, you know, dip that brush into paint, like it's going to be there. It's there. Yeah, actually. So I ended up, I was up like way too late and I've been really into resin art you know, how people are making, you know, resin and epoxy and amazing tables. And anyways, I've been fascinated by it. So I bought my first resin kit where I'm going to make a tray and I got different colors. So this is, it's happening. You're living a tangible tool, Polly. We're doing what the say, we're doing what we say other people should do. Absolutely. Like everyone who's listening today, like pick up some sort of art form, like fucking try it. See if it helps you move through. Yuck. And if something is like speaking to you or whispering to you, like in the same vein that like when you saw that resin art and you're just like, it's so cool. Like, oh my gosh, that looks so fun. Like that's so cool. And you could just sit there and admire it all day. But like you bought the kit because you need to like, you need to like, as Abraham Hicks says, touch it, feel it, taste it, you know, lick it. You need, well, don't lick resin, but <laughs> I would, I would lick resin for sure. <laughs> I've worked with resin. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, it's very challenging to work with it because of the time and the, you know, the mixing ratios and all that stuff. There's a little science to it, but it's fun and, um, it's messy. It's fun. And the results are always, they're always interesting, you know, whether you get it right or not, it's just cool that you created this tangible thing that didn't exist before. So, um, I love that. I love that you did that. 
yeah, it's, it's, it's sitting in the other room right now. So, and, and just to what you were saying earlier, like if, if something speaks to you, like listen to that voice. And, you know, when I discovered this encaustic process, I was on YouTube watching abstract acrylic painters. And I love watching people paint on, on YouTube and on the suggestion box of videos, it said encaustic painting. And I remember thinking, well, I've heard that word. I don't know what it is. I want to see it. So I click on it and I kid you not, this was like 2008. I see this and I'm like, what do I need? And when can I start? I just knew that I had to go seek the materials because they're not really easy to find. I need to get these materials. I need to do this immediately. And I didn't know why. Like, why do I want to paint with wax? Why? I, but I don't know, but I had to. It was like, this has to go down. We're doing it. And so I went and I got the materials and I started tinkering around with it. And then I needed to like do more with it and more with it. And it just grew and grew and grew. So that's how these things are born. So as we wrap up, it's like to our listeners, right? Art awakens your inner explorer. So go explore, bitches. Yes, explore that. Yes. Karen, thank you for joining us and reminding everyone that art is power and art is transformative and magical. And just do it. If you've been thinking about doing arts and crafts, go fucking do it. Yeah, just Let's do it. And thank you for having me and let me sp- and letting me spread that message. <laughs> yes, it's a good message. Big, big love. Big, big love. We'll catch you later.